alert. Here are eight major election developments that everyone needs to know about, Michael Snyder reports. Can you believe that we are less than a week away from election day? Over 57 million Americans have already voted, and in some states, more than half of the total expected vote is already in. So it may already be too late for some for a last minute surprise to alter the outcome of the election. In 2020, Democrats absolutely dominated the early voting period, but in 2024, things are very close between Democrats and Republicans. Is this an indication that a red landslide is coming? Or are Republicans simply shifting votes that would have been cast on election day into early voting period? We will soon find out. In any event, the following are eight major election developments that everyone needs to know about. Number one, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that the state of Virginia can purge approximately 1,600 non-citizens from its voter rolls. The Supreme Court Wednesday allowed Virginia to move forward with its removal of roughly 1,600 alleged non-citizens from voter rolls just days before the 2024 election. As we know, it's illegal for non-citizens to vote. The High Court granted a request from state officials to pause a lower court order that blocked Virginia from continuing its voter removal program that was launched in August, exactly 90 days before Election Day. A provision of the National Voter Registration Act requires states to complete programs aimed at purging ineligible voters from registration lists up to 90 days before federal elections. Number two, there were reports that officials in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, had been turning away on-demand mail ballot voters early. Now a judge in Bucks County has extended on-demand mail ballot voting until Friday, and this is considered to be a major victory for the Trump campaign. Bucks County Judge Jeffrey Trauger has ordered the Bucks County Board of Elections to extend its on-demand mail-in ballot deadline until the close of business on Friday, November 1st, that's tomorrow. The Wednesday afternoon ruling stems from a lawsuit filed several hours earlier by former President Donald Trump's campaign and other state and national GOP groups claiming Bucks County legally turned away voters. The filing with the Bucks County Court of Commons, please, posted online late Wednesday morning, alleges that the county violated the state's election laws by not allowing some voters to use the on-demand mail ballot option in the final hours of mail-in ballot applications, 5 p.m. October 29. Number three, in Wisconsin, turnout in the consecutive counties of Waukesha, Ozaki, and Washington is far higher than turnout in liberal bastion of Dane County. The conservative WOW counties of Waukesha, Ozaki, and Washington have increased their turnout advantage over liberal Dane County by up to 12.16%. Dane's turnout advantage going into election day 2020 was 0.9%. This represents a 13% turnout swing compared to 2020. Number four, in Arizona, Republicans are doing a much better job of turning out low propensity voters than Democrats are. A look at Arizona voter frequency scores shows that Democrats are trailing Republicans by a couple of points in the 0, 1, and 2 buckets, turning out more of their 3 to 3 voters. It's not an excellent combination for available votes down the stretch, so Republicans are likely to outvote Democrats by 300,000 plus votes. Number five, abortion is on the ballot in both Arizona and Nevada. And this was supposed to be a major advantage for Kamala Harris in those states. But it turns out that vast numbers of pro-abortion voters are going to vote for Trump anyway. While the uh, a Washington Post Shar school poll conducted in October found that 68% of voters in Arizona and 80% of voters in Nevada say they plan to support their state's abortion referendum, the small poll showed the same poll showed Harris narrowly behind Trump in Arizona and tied in Nevada. Harris's support among likely voters in the poll was 46% in Arizona to Trump's 49%, and they both had 48% support in Nevada. Meanwhile, Trump, who has claimed credit for a rose reversal, 
has been working to assuage the concerns of independent and Republican voters who support abortion rights. In recent weeks, the former president has promised to veto a national abortion ban after repeated refusing, repeatedly refusing to make such a pledge. While he has maintained that each state should choose its own abortion laws, he said in a recent town hall geared towards women voters that many of the current bans are too tough. Republican and independent voters who plan to split their ticket on abortion, voting for an abortion referendum and for Trump, said they were willing to give Trump the benefit of the doubt on the issue, with some feeling reassured by his recent promises not to crack down further on abortion. Number six, as I discussed yesterday, it appears that the Harris campaign may be giving up on the swing state of North Carolina. So far, Democrats in the state have cast over 300,000 fewer votes than they did in the same stage of 2020 early voting period. According to Ad Impact, a political intelligence firm, on Monday, the harris Walls campaign reserved $2.7 million worth of ads in North Carolina for the last stretch of the campaign, only to turn around and kill more than $2 million of its, uh, dollars more of, it, of its reservations on Tuesday. Though Harris is following through on a scheduled rally, rally on Wednesday morning, while Trump is holding his own event in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, her campaign manager's hopes of winning North Carolina's 16 electoral votes have likely plunged as daily updates of early voting numbers continue to paint a grim picture of her prospects in the Tar Heel state. The 2020 versus 2024 contrast in early voting patterns is striking. Compared to the same time four years ago, North Carolina Democrats have cast 341,000 fewer votes, while Republicans have cast 9,000 more votes, noted Andy Jackson of the Raleigh-based John Locke Foundation. Aside from the party mix, North Carolina is also seeing lower turnout among two traditional Democratic voter blocs, young people and blacks. In 2020, 92% of the state's black voters backed Biden. Across the country, however, black support of Trump is surging. Number seven, a television station in Pennsylvania is apologizing for broadcasting randomly generated test results that were meant to help news organizations make sure their equipment is working properly in advance of election night. Test results for the upcoming November 5th, November 5th general election mistakenly appeared on WNEP-TV early Sunday evening during a broadcast of Formula One Mexico, Mexico Grand Prix. Those numbers should not have been appearing, appearing on the screen, and it was an error by WNEP that they did. These numbers seen on the screen were randomly generated test results sent out to help news organizations make sure their equipment is working properly in advance of election night. Number eight, it turns out that the incendiary devices that were used to set ballot boxes in Oregon and Washington on fire had a pro-Palestinian message inscribed on them. Ballot boxes in Oregon and Washington were set on fire with incendiary devices early Monday in what authorities believe are connected incidents, police said. The devices used in the arson incidents carried markings with the expression Free Gaza. Two sources familiar with the ongoing investigation told ABC News. Sadly, I believe that this is just the beginning of the chaos that's coming. November 5th may be the end of the campaign, but it will also be the beginning of a very dark chapter in our history. There is going to be such an outpouring of negative emotion in the aftermath of this election, and whoever emerges as the winner is going to be facing crisis after crisis. This is by Michael Snyder on the Economic Collapse blog. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. About the author, Michael Snyder's new book, Why, is available on paperback and for Kindle on Amazon. He's also written eight other books available on Amazon, including Chaos, End Times, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophets in the Future of America, The Beginning of the End of Living a Life That Really Matters. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work that he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes them by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream and the Most Important News, and he always freely, happily allows others to republish those articles on their own websites. 
These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge you to invite you to, uh, to, to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.